being worldly to reach the world, right? Yeah. Like you, you being carnal or being um, just l- highly liberal. I, I actually think that's unwise because what is the appeal of Jesus if we're not walking like Jesus to people who don't know him? Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, like how, how can I tell you about the holiness of Jesus and the righteousness? How can I be a light mm-hmm. if I'm not actually being a light? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so it feels like a very fleshly way to engage people. It does. And, 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 and to some degree, it feels like a way to please people. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's a, and, uh, that might be an assumption, but it feels like, are you afraid? To actually just be righteous in how you preach the gospel, yeah. like, do you feel like that might it, is that intimidating no, I, to you? I, I, yeah, I think for some that I think that can be the temptation, but I think for some people, I think some people really think that that that's how they reach people. It's kind of like you, you know, I have to show them that I'm I relate to them. We're putting. Yo, welcome to the show, everybody. We thank you all for joining us another week. Um, we hope everyone is staying blessed and safe, staying out the way. And um, if you aren't a follower of Christ, um, start re- op- open up the read the Bible. You know, come join the come join the faith walk. Um, time is running out. You never know. T- tomorrow may not be promised to you. And uh, you want to make sure your soul is saved. You want to make sure your soul is secured. You want to get into the kingdom. And that's what we all strive to do. And uh, we thank you all for uh, supporting our show. Thank you for like, commenting, subscribing, um, supporting us. Uh, We do this show for you all to uh, get the word of God out, to get the news, the worldly news that's going on around the world, to keep you all informed. And, um, yeah. Uh, Thank you guys for tuning in. The cash app will be at the bottom. So if you want to... Do a generous donation, whether small <laughs> or large. <laughs> and only, it, it just depends on you. And um, I pray everybody is healthy. And I pray uh, that everybody got some food in their fridge. And they're, they're able to put on some clothes. And they got a car that's working. So they can uh, go and make a, a li- honest living. For sure. Because, you know, the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. For sure. All right. And uh, without further ado, we want to give a special shout out to our sponsors today, Proden Max. Thank you, Proden Max. And uh, we take this seriously when we um, go through our sponsors. We want to make sure that um, it aligns with um, that they're good companies and uh, good products. You know, we and don't. It wanna... aligns with our Christian value. Exactly, exactly, and that's most of all. Now, uh, Proden Max is a black-owned company out of Chicago. Now, Proden Max is organic and it's a natural toothpaste. So, if you all are uh, expecting to see all these chemicals and um, all that on the back of the toothpaste, you won't see it because it is natural and it's organic. Uh, it was started because of uh, the chemical toothpaste and the chemical mouthwash. Uh, the owner uh, has stated, if you read the back of the label on commercial products, it says, "Warning: If you swallow a small amount, contact your poison center immediately." Right. Now, why, why would it have to say that if it's toothpaste? You know, it's something you have to put in your mouth. So um, this, and as you know, as we do know, uh, toothpaste also contains fluoride. And we know mm, that that's bad yeah. for our brains as Powerful well. Poison, yeah. So uh, we're pa- pro- Very poisonous. Very poisonous. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. They actually put it in the water, too. That's what's so crazy. They put it in the water and a toothpaste. Yeah, I know they fired a guy um, because he was concerned about the levels of fluoride yeah. in the water. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, so thank you to Proden Max. Uh, you can um, thank you, Proden Max. Uh, you can take a look at the picture on the screen. You can order it from Amazon. They have great reviews there. And uh, Des, what's a couple of the? Pro- they are vegan friendly. Uh, as some well. of the ingredients are we got some. Um, let's see, some tea tree. Got some sea salt. Mm. Got some peppermint. Yeah. Got some myrrh. So you know it's gonna be smelling good so it's not <laughs> it's not vegan and trash right i know my sister she likes some of the that stole soaps and stuff and yes it smells hard some of it smells horrible 
and but it, it, it's healthy for you and it's good for you. So we at least they know that you know they putting some tea tree and some some myrrh in there. And you want to put uh, natural ingredient. The, if you don't eat it, co- you wouldn't want to coconut powder and oil. Coconut powder and oil, okay. It's, it's and you right. want to put natural ingredients. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, if you can't eat it, you, why would you want to put it on your skin? Right. It, it goes straight to your bloodstream. Right. So um, yeah, guys, uh, feel free to. Um, Look it up on Amazon or uh, Google Prodent Max. And uh, yeah, black Prodent owned company. Max. And special thanks and shout out to give, you. All. I got to give me some too. Of course. So you might see me brushing my teeth with uh, some of that Prodent Max. Yeah, we got to get them sparkly, white, yeah. and healthy. Yeah. All right, guys. So, man, let's jump into it. Um, again, thank you all for joining us another week. Um, since then, of course, we, you know, we always start off with the weather. Right. Uh, New York is look like it's flooded. New York is flooded. Um, also flooded with people. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and listen, and Chicago is flooded with people too. Yeah. You well, know, we, we praying for the people in New York that's going through the flood, and uh, we pray that they, you know, they, they end up be able to have shelter. And, and some in, of them in the police stations and in the airports look like. Yeah, it's you know, um it's some type of shit. Today, the Caribbean was hit by one of the most powerful earthquakes on record in that region, magnitude 7.7. It was centered in the sea between Jamaica and Cuba, and it was felt 450 miles away in Miami. Mwoba Horkis is there, and Manny, I understand you could feel the shaking. Somebody lived in New York City, and did you just have your house sprayed with pesticides? I was in my living room, my windows are open, these trucks come by, they're making these dystopian announcements, run inside, get inside. This is the creepiest Look at this. What the f- is going right on my window? We are getting some new staggering numbers from our CBP contacts telling us that between Friday and Monday, there were over 35,000 migrant encounters at our southern border. You do the math on that, that's almost 9,000 every single day. Astronomical numbers approaching record highs. In the meantime, local communities out here have to deal with it every day. Take a look at this video, human smuggling pursuit, video courtesy of Texas DPS. Their troopers involved in a high-speed pursuit in Kinney County. An illegal immigrant driving a stolen truck uh, has a truck full of illegal immigrants fleeing from troopers. They end up spike stripping him. He loses control of the car and goes off into the brush. The DPS helicopter thermal camera shows everybody bailing out of that vehicle, running off in different directions. That's the driver and six illegal immigrants. Another human smuggling bus. Take a look at this footage out of Dimmit County. Texas DPS troopers once again stopping a truck that was hauling a sand trailer. That truck was stolen out of the San Antonio area. So they search it and they find nine illegal immigrants being smuggled in that sand trailer, which I will add was sealed at the top. There was no escape, no ventilation, obviously a huge problem in the Texas heat. The driver now charged with human smuggling with likelihood of injury or death for those migrants. Can you come into a community and dump people in our community like this? This is not fair. The city's pressing migrant crisis in the spotlight now more than ever, and Southside residents are fired up over plans to put up tents. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Scott Schneider. And I'm Don Hasbrook. Tonight, a meeting on the issue was filled to capacity, and many community members are frustrated that they were not let in. Casey Cron is live in Roseland with the latest. Casey. Don and Scott, community members want to make their voices heard on this subject, and tonight many weren't able to. On the table is a proposal from Mayor Brandon Johnson that would place hundreds of migrants in makeshift camps in a former Jewel parking lot. 
at Sheldon Heights Church of Christ, an open dialogue on the migrant crisis hosted by Alderman Ronnie Mosley was packed inside and out. First of all, they definitely chose this venue for a reason. They chose a small venue so that they could discourage the community from sh being able to show up. With fall and winter fast approaching, Mayor Brandon Johnson is looking to move migrants from police stations into what the city is calling winterized base camps. This is essentially like a band-aid to a gunshot wound. You are putting a band-aid on a huge problem at hand. One potential site, the former Jewel parking lot at 115th and Halstead. Uh, I think that's a bad idea. They want to push this out of sight and out of mind. But it's coming with pushback. Many calling on the city's leaders to focus on the needs of taxpayers. We are the residents of this community and we demand that they do not put these people here. They're not even following the rules in the police station. What makes us think that they're going to follow the rules here? That teaches exactly what's happening. It's called the Cloward Piven Strategy Look it up. Fact check me on this. It was first proposed in 1966 at Columbia University by a professor named Richard Clower. And you know who went to Columbia? Who was taught this curriculum at Columbia? Well, lots of notable presidents, cabinet secretaries, and attorney generals. Uh, to name a few, remember 2016 who was president? Oh, Obama. Yeah, he went to Columbia. Madeleine Albright, U.S. Secretary of State. Anthony Blinken, current U.S. Secretary of State. Harold Brown, previous Secretary of Defense. Bill Barr, the previous Attorney General. Eric Holder, the Attorney General before him. And this is just to name a few, right? So what exactly is the Cloward Pivot strategy that they teach there? Well, it's a strategy to speed up the fall and collapse of capitalism by systematically overwhelming the government systems with a flood of impossible demands. And it ends up pushing society into a crisis and an economic collapse in order to get this, bring down America and the entire capitalist system. Yes, this is real. This is what they teach. Cloward Piven strategy. Look it up. Now, this Cloward Piven strategy teaches people how to overwhelm the system with massive spending, entitlements, and debt. Sound familiar? And the goal is literally to collapse the entire economy, wipe out the middle class, and bring a nation down to their knees, begging the government to save them. So what's this strategy all about exactly? Let's dig into it a little bit. Now, in the 1966 article, Cloward and Piven, that was his wife, they charged that the ruling classes, the rich, used welfare to weaken the poor, and that by providing a social safety net that the rich were basically holding the poor people down. They were preventing them from rebelling. They said in the paper, quote, poor people can advance only when the rest of society is afraid of them, end quote. Cloward told the New York Times this, quote, on September 27th, 1970. Now, rather than giving the poor, you know, government handouts, wrote Cloward and Piven, activists should work to sabotage and destroy the welfare system because, as they said in their own words, the collapse of the welfare state would ignite a political and financial crisis that would rock the nation. Poor people would rise in revolt, and only then would the rest of society accept their demands. Hmm. What a strategy. Now, the key to sparking this rebellion would be to expose the inadequacy of the welfare state. Cloward Piven's early promoters cited radical organizer Saul Alinsky as their inspiration. You might recognize that name, Saul Alinsky. He wrote a book called Rules of Radicals. It's what Obama says that he read. It's what Hillary Clinton said they read. If you read the book, it's gonna explain a lot of what's going on. One of the things that he wrote in his book is something saying, quote, make the enemy live up to their own book of rules. So when pressed to honor every word of every law and every statute, every moral tenet and every implicit promise of the liberal social construct, human agencies inevitably fall short. The system's failure to, quote, live up to its rule book can then be used to discredit it altogether and to replace the capitalist rule book with a socialist one. So that explains the plan. But how did they plan to implement it? Okay, well, a key component of the plan involved fooling the voters by calling yourself moderate and a uniter, even though you're a radical Marxist, and to never, ever admit what you really believe in. It involved demonizing your opponents by calling them evil, greedy, extreme, radical, and a terrorist. Look in the mirror and call your opponents the very things that you are. The plan teaches to always hide your true intentions, or in other words, lie or misrepresent, whatever you want to call it. 
Obamacare is about saving the uninsured as opposed to, you know, income redistribution. Government regulations are to protect us from global warming as opposed to, you know, wiping out small businesses. Amnesty for illegal immigration is about fairness as opposed to creating 12 million new Democratic voters. Now, the key to it all is to what they say, you know, boil the frog slowly. So by the time he realizes what's happening, he'd be cooked. The authors of this strategy, Tot, proposed a, quote, massive drive to recruit the poor onto the welfare rolls. They calculated that by persuading even a fraction of potential welfare recipients to demand their entitlements, it would bankrupt the entire system. The result, they predicted, would be a, quote, a profound financial and political crisis that would unleash, quote, powerful forces for major economic reforms at the national level. Now, this article also called for, quote, aggressive organizers, end quote, to use demonstrations to create a climate of militancy. Now, they would use carefully orchestrated media campaigns. They would float the idea of a federal program of income redistribution in the form of a guaranteed living income for all. Hmm. Um, it's some type of strategy. I'm going to put the uh, video clip up here so you all can take a look. And they're saying that um, this happens when you want when you want the government collapse. It's, it's when you um, overwhelm the government so much and then you the, the budget spikes up to where you kind of don't know what to do and a lot of money has to be issued out and then a, a, a small collapse start and um elon Musk also talk, also talked about it um again um they're having problems over in italy i believe too with uh migrants coming over uh almost filling up the island they have nowhere to go so you got italy you have new york you have chicago of course you have texas and then a lot of bur burglaries and violence is starting to happen i mean so it's not just one city and these are some pretty big states and cities where these problems are starting to occur so it's just something to keep your eye out on um about that but yeah um and speaking of that they want to uh, introduce uh, government-ran grocery stores in Chicago. And I thought this article was pretty interesting because, um, you know, the Walmarts and a couple stores had closed down, not only in Chicago, but, you know, a, a couple other places in uh, states. And so it's interesting that um, they're going to uh, try to test out these government-ran gro grocery stores out in uh, Chicago. Um they're saying, now hear what they, they're saying. They're saying all Chicagoans deserve to live near convenient, affordable, healthy grocery options. They say we know access to grocery stores is already a challenge for many residents, especially on the south and west sides. Now, this is what Mayor Brandon said. Now, he's saying a better, stronger, safer future is one where our youth and our communities have access to the tools and resources they need to thrive. My administration is committed to advancing innovative whole of government approaches to a address their um, problems. I am proud to work alongside partners to take the step in envisioning what a government-owned grocery store in Chicago could look like. That is interesting to me. Um, of course, he mentioned some good uh, bullet points here, which is um, something that we, that not just they need grocery stores now, something that they've been needing everyone's been needing for a long time you know in the, especially in a lot of black neighborhoods you don't have grocery stores and the grocery stores that they did have out there had got closed down now um now it's interesting that those stores got closed down and they're going to move government ran grocery stores in the black neighborhoods mm. so yeah that's where it's going to be control they want to be able to control the black population really they want to control the world anyway but that's how that's how you control them Test by subjects, the food, yeah. by and, the food, yeah. and then you can you know you create your little fifteen minute city or whatever. You don't like, and to get in this government. We were thinking like they have to do a lot of building. Really, all they got to do is put down some checkpoints. Yeah, that's as long it. As they got the grocery stores and the WalMarts, whatever. Some and you see where they're starting it off and they said on the south and west sides those are the black neighborhoods that's where the walmarts left they say oh they need grocery stores out there of course they do you've been knowing this we yeah. it's, it need grocery stores out in the hoods now yeah. so they say don't worry help is on the way and i'm pretty sure and i and i could just be saying this but maybe to get in this uh government ran grocery store you may have to have a digital id maybe i don't know you may have to scan oh, it's going to be a technology know. you know it's going right. to be a, and they're going to say the main focus, it wouldn't like be profit. You know what I mean? It's not about how much the grocery store will make. We just want to make sure everybody's able to get food. 
<laughs> Never <laughs> trust him. Uh, it's, it's a spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places, in high places. So these people coming in with the government, you know, these white people, they ain't never, they government ain't never been for you, for real, for real. You know, we're gonna be honest, they've never been for you. So what makes you think they're trying to be for you now? They're not. They got a plan that they're trying to put in place. And you go in and try to kick in, like rush their establishment and take their food and stuff and see what they do to you. All right. Also, out in Chicago, Mayor Brandon Johnson's administration has signed a. T- $29.3 million contract with a private security firm to help set up winterized base camps of large military-style tents to help house hundreds of migrants and get them out of police stations. Now, the contract with Garter Royal Federal Services LLC was signed on September 12th and would allow the city to purchase temporary housing solutions and related services to provide critical service to um, asylum seekers according to city records. Now, the contract does not include any specific locations for the temp encampments, but um, last week, they held a community meeting in the Roseland neighborhood. Now, Roseland is a um, out in Chicago. It's a black area to discuss a proposal to turn an empty parking lot near 115th and Halstead into a base camp for nearly uh, 1,400 uh, migrants. And uh, the city was not happy about this um, at all. A lot of the neighbors, the community came out and was speaking out against this. And uh, I believe they may be seeking to do something similar to something like this out of New York because they need somewhere for the migrants to go. Um, But I think out of New York, they're putting them in like um, close to schools and stuff. And uh, the community, they didn't like that. So this is just something to keep an eye on, guys, because this just doesn't happen um, by a mistake. Like, oh, migrants are coming over. We got to do something with them. No, this is... This, this has been planned out. Yeah. They want them to come over. This has been planned out. They want them to come over. That's that's why they made it easy to uh, get asylum, you know, seek asylum. You know? Mm-hmm. So maybe they have, you know, it's a political move. Maybe they're going to allow these people to get votes, you know, to cast their votes in. And they know we're the Democrats. We're the ones that let you cross the border. Maybe those votes that, you know, those are those are going to be our votes. They saw letting these people over soon as uh, Biden got in office. Yeah. So if, just think about how they, I think some of the numbers were like 30,000 a month. Yeah, it was, and you got to know like it was that. something planned because remember, even when Trump was in office, he kept saying, we need a wall. Yeah. Like something like, so this is, I think it's just now getting attention. And they're going to use that. Yes. Yeah. You, if you let Trump in office, he, he's going to get a wall. He's going to uh, deport you guys. He's going to, you know, they're going to come with those fear tactics for all the people that they let across the border and the Mexicans, you know, that that are here. They're not going to want to see their family members being deported or whatever. So they're most likely going to vote Democrat. Also, in New York, a new robot. Which we, I don't oh. care about neither side. I'm just being, you know. Oh, yeah, they're all the same, same, you know, Republican, Democrat, like, hey, nothing's really ever changed, to be honest with you. Two wings are the same bird. So there is a new robot in New York City. Now, um, we already know they had the police dog. But this is you that this day was coming, but now it's here. Police in the U.S. have just rolled out their new way of fighting crime in New York's Times Square. Meet your new AI-driven security officer. City officials said that the police robot will cruise around the Midtown subway station for the next two months alongside a human NYPD partner as part of a test program. It will work 18-hour shifts from 6 a.m., weighs a whopping 400 pounds, and will be rolling around recording 360-degree HD footage. Police say that no audio or facial recognition data will be collected and promise that it would adhere to the same guidelines as all of their other technology. However, if you did need it to record audio, there's a button which you can push to call for police. They also say that if anyone tries to vandalize the robot, they will be caught on camera and arrested. But this is called the Night Scope 5 or K5. Now, it's described as a fully autonomous outdoor security robot by the tech company in Mountain View, California that builds the robots. It's said to begin patrolling the Times Square subway station between midnight and 6 a.m. Um, the 5 foot 2 inch robot, which weighs about 400 pounds, is weatherproof and capable of, of capturing 360 degree video. 
It sports four HD cameras with wide angle lenses, as well as an infrared thermal camera. It will also record video that could be used in case of emergency or a crime, Adam said. Now they said that K5 won't be pursuing or catching any criminals as its top speed is three miles per hour. Also, the robot needs brakes because it can patrol for two and a half to three hours on a fully charged battery. Now, um, the robot will not record audio or facial recognition, Adam said, but it has a button citizens can use to report incidents. Now, what kind of robot does not record audio or facial recognition? Right. But um, yeah, they already have robot robotic dogs out there. Now they have this new robotic K5 that's going to be policing the um, substations. Um, everything is just going robotic and AI now. Um, well, and they said what it, it needs um, to get a full charge so it can only patrol for a couple hours. Why would you even want that? Wouldn't you want a real human out there then? Right. So, but I, the human don't charge. I mean, the the robot don't charge. It's free of charge. Yeah, but it's, it's a budget a coming stop. out of them. It's a yeah. big budget. You, you know one, what I mean? One you time just, fee, and then other that, you know, a little maintenance upkeep. And yeah. the thing is, they're going to probably get a lot of these type of things and then pass a bill. That's how they do. They started mm -hmm. off, we're not going to get face direction, <laughs> recognition. We're not going to get, you know, your voice. And nothing. We're not going to record none of this. But then we pass a bill. Now we can't get it. That's all they do. They come out with it first. And then, you know, the bill is how we now we can do more stuff. At first, we're going to come in your house. We can't watch or search nothing. You just let us in your house. Okay, you let them in. Our, okay, we passed the bill. Not only we can come in your house, but we can search through everything. Yeah, and and they're tested out in these uh, big cities. You know what I mean? New York, out of all, it seems like if they if if the uh, robot can only go for two hours, you want to test it out in a small area first to see how it's going to go. What you know? But yeah. you you going full throttle out in New York City, and um, so I just. Uh, Anyways, so Spotify is set to test AI to translate podcasts into multiple languages using the host voice. So I'm not going to read this article all together. Uh, you all can look into it. Uh, audio giant Spotify is testing the use of artificial intelligence technology to translate podcasts into multiple languages using the host voice. So basically, if you have a podcast or like we have a podcast, it can be translated into multiple languages using our voice. Now, and it's just something to pay attention to uh, with this AI because AI they're setting AI up to do everything. AI up to do patrol. AI up to do this uh, th this giant AI statue that they're bringing into multiple cities. Um, AI in the stores, you know what I mean? Uh, AI in podcasts. AI uh, to uh, help you look up things, these chat box and, and all of that. So it seems like everything is being set up strictly for AI. At least that's what it seems like it is to me. And this is kind of, um, you know, for the AI to use your voice and to speak any language, man, uh, this AI is, they're building up to be pretty powerful in, yeah. in the sense of that. Got it. Um, House Republicans block Biden from using AIDS relief program to promote abortion. Pro-life groups are pr uh, praising the U.S. House of Republican uh, Representatives for ensuring that a program designed to provide AIDS relief overseas is not uh, used to send taxpayer dollars to organi organizations that promote abortions. So he wants to promote the abortions through people AIDS program, you know, through the AIDS program. The wow, money that was sickening. used to help people overseas, that's he's trying to use that money. So deny them the people that got AIDS over there, you die. That's sick. Deny them, but we gonna promote abortion. We are gonna give it to the organizations that promote abortion. Wow. And, uh, we know that is murder. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, abortion. Abortion is the Latin word that means baby. So that that means baby. Uh, Psalms one hundred six verses thirty seven. Uh, they even sacrifice their sons and their daughters to demons. So when you kill your baby, when you go get that abortion, abortion, you're sacrificing your son to a demon. You're sacrificing your daughter to a demon because God put the baby in your stomach. You can't you can't just kill it. Bobby said, thou shall not kill. And that's murder. Uh, and they give it a different name so it won't sound like you're killing the baby. Oh, abortion. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, medical. We're going to give you. Make sure you get medical care to be able. Yeah, you know. That's why they say fetus. Mm. Which all they're saying is a baby. Is a that's baby. That's what a fetus is a baby. That's what it means. Uh, Leviticus 18, verse 21. You shall not give any of your children to uh, offer them to Moloch and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Uh, Isaiah 44, verses 24. Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee uh, from the womb, I am the Lord. So he formed you in the womb. He formed you in the womb. Uh, I am the Lord. That maketh all things and stretch forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth aboard abroad the earth uh, by myself. Uh, Psalms one hundred three verses thirteen. For you formed my inward parts; you knitted me together in my mother's womb. So God did all of this. So how can somebody just uh, agree? So uh, somebody pass a law that? Or promote abortions How can You know what I'm saying Like you, you're promoting murder So that lets you know Again That there's wickedness In high places A whole A host of wickedness That's what they do These are demonic people That got a demonic agenda That they're trying to promote uh, The murdering of kids All right Elon Musk says First human patient Will soon receive Neuralink brain implant So Um as we all know, Elon Musk has been working on Neuralink for, for quite a t uh, some time now. Now, Neuralink announced that recruitment is open for the first inhuman clinical trial of its wireless brain-computer interface, BCI. Now, the precise robotically implant brain-computer interface prime study will evaluate the safety of Neuralink's implant, the N1, and surgical robot R1, and assess whether the device can help paralyze people control external devices with their thoughts. Quote, unquote, they say the first human patient will soon receive a Neuralink device. This ultimately has the potential to restore full body movement, Musk posted on X. In the long term, Neuralink hopes to play a role in AI risk civil, uh, civilizational risk reduction by improving human to AI and human to human bandwidth by several orders of magnitude. Uh, so uh, long story short, now I just want to go something, go back to this uh, sentence. He said that um, he said the first he said this ultimately has the potential to restore full body movement. How would you know that? How would you know that? And I always go back to the simple questions because it's like this stuff has been tested already. Now, whether it's been tested to the to us, to the population, that's some totally different. But people have been had experiments ran on them and all that. How would you know this has a potential to restore a full body movement? You can control it with your thoughts. You would have to test it on something. So, um, and the fact that they're ready to start running these human trials out for this, um, it just puts us closer to man and machine, man and one. Nearly. Uh, computer and human, uh, of what, what you would call it. All right, so we're going through Houston Airport, doing all biometrics now. Check it out. Welcome to 1984. Continue. Uh, Thank you, Nicholas. You're all set. Thank you. All right, so you saw it. No passport, no boarding pass. Tell me what you think about that. 21 years, two months, and 11 days. So how was it the first day that I got out? First, let me put a few things in perspective. When I got locked up in 1997, cell phones didn't even have texting capabilities, and Biggie Smalls' Life After Death was the number one album in America came home to an iPhone 6 and Drake was the number one artist in America. The morning started with me receiving a debit card with all the money on my books. So I was standing out in front of the facility that I was released at and I was waiting on my cousin to come pick me up and there was a gas station across the street and I wanted a cup of coffee real bad so I walk over to the gas station and then it dawns on me I didn't know how to use the damn debit card. I had never seen one before. I didn't know if you give it to the cashier. Was there a machine? And there was this Puerto Rican lady. I knew she was Puerto Rican because she had the flag. And I told her my situation. I just got released. I didn't know how to use the debit card. And she walked me in there and showed me how to use the debit card. Then my cousin shows up to pick me up and I get in his car and I hear Siri's voice for the first time. And it floored me because I thought somebody was in the backseat when she started speaking. 
And that's how my first morning looked like. And I had a whole afternoon and night. Passports are becoming more sophisticated. Many countries have switched from traditional passports to e-passports. E-passports are electronic passports. In other words, they come with a small electronic chip inside. The chip contains personal information such as name, date of birth, address and other crucial data. E-passports use a radio frequency identification chip and an antenna, which is embedded as an inlay in the back cover. They enable officials to verify a traveler's details quickly. And now Finland has taken the passport technology to another level. The European nation has become the world's first country to test digital passports, labeled Digital Travel Credentials, or DTC. It's an alternative to the traditional passport check at airports. In other words, it's a digital rendition of a physical passport. To use it, Finnish citizens first need to download an app on their phone and physically register at a dedicated police station. A digital copy of the passport is created by scanning the chip inside a real one. It is designed to be stored on a smartphone. The passenger just uh, uh, arrives there, look at the camera, we make the facial comparison and matching, and if that's uh, done... From New York to Tokyo, these scanning stations look like a scene out of a sci-fi movie, one where humans trade their personal biometric data for the right to participate in a new kind of modern economy. This is WorldCoin. What it's trying to do is have a validated identity for every person in the world to connect your identity to an address on the blockchain. For a long time, most people didn't know that Sam Altman, the man behind OpenAI and ChatGBT, had a crypto side project. That is, until it officially launched in July. The project has a lot of big name backers. In May, WorldCoin raised $115 million in a Series C funding round led by Blockchain Capital. Other members of its cap table include VCs like Andreessen Horowitz and Coinbase. WorldCoin, now valued at $3 billion, according to the information, promises to be a new decentralized form of identity. A user signs up through the app and they are then tasked with visiting a WorldCoin location in one of the more than 20 countries where the orbs are currently operational. Now, that in-person visit lasts a few minutes and is all about proving a person is a human and not a bot. So you show up to prove that you're not a bot, but how do you prove you are who you say you are? Well, by providing WorldCoin a scan of your iris using a proprietary technology WorldCoin built called the Orb. The process of collecting certain biometric data to confirm identity is similar in spirit to the scans that Clear does at the airport or even the Apple Face ID. Now with WorldCoin, that iris scan allows you to get a digital decentralized passport known as a World ID. In a world where tech companies constantly lose track or exploit people's data, skeptics aren't so sure. Edward Snowden said on Twitter, don't use biometrics for anything, in response to Altman's post about WorldCoin in 2021, adding that the human body is not a ticket punch. WorldCoin says more than 2.2 million people have signed up so far, but the ambition is to ultimately span the entire globe while offering a couple other big perks along the way. Altman has already talked about using WLD, the platform's native crypto token, as a way to create and distribute a universal basic income. And then there's the utility of a digital identity where a world ID could hypothetically be used to sign in to all websites without having to forfeit identifying information in the process, like a name or email, or be traceable by government. The white paper says a total of 10 billion tokens will be released onto the market over the next 15 years. But in practice, the biggest incentive appears to be the $60 worth of WLD coin that is handed out to people outside the US who sign up for a world ID. Muvia, who works in fraud prevention and customer security for crypto exchange Yellow Card. This event is very prophetic because every single week since the countdown began on March the 7th, the UN has stated or its affiliates have stated there's seven years to go. That's a, that's a major declaration they've said for the last 13 or 14 weeks. And we have seven years left and we have we have to uh, strengthen the Paris Climate Agreement. So that's all, that's what it's all centered around is the Paris Climate Agreement. And then you'll see the SDGs attack, att attached to that, the Sustainable Development Goals. So there are 17 goals. The first goal is no poverty, but it, it really is welfare dependence. So every so those who are rich have to give to the poor. And we see this with the with the loss and damage fund that uh, the rich nations have to pay for the poor nations when they have a big storm event 
or a big, big tsunami. It's the, it's the it's the big nations that are at fault. So it, they're they're saying that climate change is the result of man's of man's uh, d- doings, not 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 God. Right, right, and they're saying it's that because we're using all this technology and those poor nations are not, and so we're the ones causing the problem. For yeah, them. we're the ones causing the problem. So it'd be welfare dependence. The second one, zero hunger, and that, and that's, and, and with that, they're going to change your, your food to GMO, and uh, and in, in different in other different forms of, of food. The third one is good health and well-being. That's you know what. And that's that's coming with the mark, the mark the mark of the beast. The fourth one is the is quality education, and so the, 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 the there's 169 targets to this these 17 goals. But the number one most important target to them is your children, and they want to re-educate all, all the child all all your children. So you you believe their agenda, and you don't believe the agenda of your parents. And it, it's taken them basically two generations to uh, to change the thought process of your children. Yeah, now that reminds me because I remember years ago, Hillary Clinton saying that what she wa- a change that she wanted to make was that children would be in school more hours during the day. I remember this so well, that there would not be a summer vacation, but that they would be in school, you know, all, the whole year, every, you know, and as many hours, so this way, um, the parents would have little influence over them. I just, oh, that was, it sounded very scary. And then the fifth one is gender equality, equality, and that destroys the family. And we're seeing a big push for that in the month of June. You'll see a big push for that at your local PetSmart also, where they're pushing the, their, their agenda. And uh, number six is clean water and sanitation, but that's really water rationing. So you're only gonna allow, be allowed so much water to use per household, and, and even locally, we already see this taking place where they you can only water your lawn on, so, uh, if it, in certain neighborhoods Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and other neighborhoods Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So we're already seeing the water rationing. Right, I, I've seen that for a while. So they're going to limit our showers once a week. <laughs> yeah, your showers are limited to a certain amount of times, or they're going to cut your water water off. That, that's where it's going to boil down to. Then the seventh one is uh, affordable and clean energy, which is really a smart grid surveillance. And we and we already I can see locally. I can give another example: the, the surveillance, how the surveillance is already here. You just drive down the road, and there's camera at every stop sign. There's a or stoplight. There's a camera, and at your mountain passes, you got cameras everywhere. So they're surveilling everything or wherever you're moving. It's already being surveilled. Plus your iPhone. For example, it tracks every movement you make and it will tell you where you need to go next is, and it's only five minutes away or whatever. So, so we're the, that tracking is, we're already seeing that tracking take. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one world communist government. The combining of national governments started with the European Union That union started with trade agreements, then a common currency, the euro. Now it's North America's turn. We will have a new currency and a new constitution. Modeled on the Soviet Union's constitution, our rights will not be inalienable, but they will be granted by government who can also take them away. You will have a national ID card with a radio frequency chip in it. You will not be able to move about freely. This is terrorism of the most worst kind, brought on you by our own government. The strongest, freest nation in the history of mankind will be averaged into world communism. Is that what you want? I want to talk to you about subliminal programming, and I'm going to show you something in this video which is going to absolutely shock you. So first of all, subliminal programming is everywhere. And what this is, it gets past the conscious mind and into the subconscious mind. And your subconscious kind of controls your perceptions and it therefore controls your reality. So it's a very, very powerful tool. Now check this photo out. I want you to look at something. And I think this picture is from a movie set in Hollywood or uh, from one of the films. Perhaps somebody in the comments can share where this 
kind of still is from, but it looks like a, like a Hollywood movie set, but look at this. Right, stare at this picture and count the people. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people, right? Looks like a still from a movie. So just look at that picture, what do you see? Look at it again. Now you're staring at this, aren't you? And you're kind of scrutinizing, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? Look at the picture, this is all subliminal. Now squint and look at the picture. Squint and look at the picture. Can you see the letters? Over in the far corner there, we've got O, B, E, and Y. If you squint again, can you see it? Can you see obey? Can you see the words obey? Yeah? And once you see it, you can't unsee it. So I want to talk to you now. Also, did you have something? Um, Canadian City okays amendment to ban words, gestures, that may offend LBGT uh, people. Mm. Lawmakers in Canada have approved a ban on any form of communication that might potentially cause an LBGT identified person to uh, feel harassed or offended following a mass uh, uh, rally. So they, they just passed a law that you know you cannot make them feel offended. You know you. Basically, if you're giving them the word of God, you know, you you you're saying, telling them that God disagrees with your lifestyle, you know, they can feel offended and they can call the police on you, and you can be arrested. Mm. That's basically what they're doing, man. Uh, let me uh, scripture. No, I'm actually a human rights advocate. But you support transitioning kids at three years old. If the kid identifies that way, then yes. Hey, what are you dressed up as today? Rainbow Jesus. Rainbow Jesus. And why, why would you dress up as Rainbow Jesus? Well, oh, pardon me real quick. You're fine. Oh. oh. Well, I'm with Metropolitan Community Church. Okay. We're the original queer church. Okay. Um, and as you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of hate that comes from mainstream <laughs> Christianity. Um, and so that reconciliation with faith and the queer community, that's what we're all about. Um, and I know for me as a small child growing up in, in the church, if I had seen Rainbow Jesus, it would have made me feel a lot better. So should they also get tattoos, be able to drink beers? Those are other, other regulated things and absolutely not, no, but... So they should just be able to change their life for the rest of their life at three years old? Leave them. Oh, at that age, I said that I identified as a WWE wrestler. I'm not. That I identify as an so astronaut now. And you know that's not. How? It is absolutely not. We the change same our minds thing. all the time. No, that is not the same thing, and you know it's not. Well, can you it's prove to me it's not the same thing? No, it's not. Can you prove to me it's not the same thing? Absolutely. One is your inherent identity. One is you just wanting to be something else. What do you mean? So he started as a man and transitioned to a female. Yes, that is permanently your changing identity. his life. Yeah, at three years old. If you can identify that way as a three-year-old, then why not? So should I be able to get a tattoo? No, because that is, so you're, you that's are much smaller than a life-changing decision thing. of a gender. You're making two different arguments here. I don't see it. One. Ash, why are you doing this? I'm David Menzies, no. Rebel News. Hi. Hi. No, you're not really uh, a part of this. We're having a team chat now. Okay, so. I'm just trying to ask some questions, sure, ma'am. But this is not the appropriate time. For that. Why are so you allowing a biological team. male to compete against so female we're players? We're not going to have a conversation with okay. you. Okay. Well, I'll talk to Ash then. <laughs> Ash, do you take joy in injuring female rugby players? Are you lacking the skills to play with male players where you should be? You're a biological male, aren't you? I got you. I got you. Right here. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rash, are you are you a misogynist? Please, thank you. Hey, watch it. You'll be charged with assault. Would you mind leaving? Mr. Rash, the governing the governing uh, body for rugby, World Rugby, says men should not compete. Wow, really? All lives, lives matter! All lives matter! All lives matter! So, Human rights matter! Human you, don't, you don't have a problem. You can leave now. Yeah. Thank you, sir. No, thank you. This yeah. is a human rights issue! Oh, okay, then. We live in Canada! All rights, rights human matter. rights for everybody! Trans what? Rights matter. matter! What about the... Trans rights matter! The 
Okay, you are traumatizing my family. I'm traumatizing them. Why? What happened? Because my kids get to see people like you crying because of things. I I'm surprised. As a mother, why would you expose your uh, kids to a misogyny? Because that is my partner. That, that is my wife that you are being. So he's a lesbian? So I'm going to just ask you guys. Why? Why? Yeah. What, you what, need to do you think it's okay for him to injure biological woman? So I'm not going to answer any of your questions. And we're going to invite all of those who identify with the drag community to come forward at this time, including our sisters and representations of the community to come, uh, to please be, um, I'm about to say at my feet, but I don't mean it that way, uh, but to come in front of the communion table. If you identify with the drag community, please come and join us at the front, one and all. For too long, we have denied the full expression of God's loving diversity. We have silenced the voices of the queer community, denied beauty of drag, and stifled self-expression. Today, we declare that we will no longer stand idly by as oppression and discrimination are allowed to thrive. We recognize that all people are made in the loving image of God, no matter who they are, how they dress and express themselves, or who they love. We celebrate this divine diversity and commit to lifting up the voices of the LGBTQ plus community and creating spaces where everyone can thrive. Drag queens are often targets of hate and violence, but we know that they are powerful and resilient people who show us what it means to be truly authentic and expressive. We honor their strength, and we pledge to be allies to the drag community, recognizing the full humanity and their incredible contributions to our world. Dallas's Cathedral of Hope gave a blessing to drag queens today. The church, which has a primary outreach to the LGBTQ community, hosted the event in response to Senate Bill 12, which criminalizes performers who put on sexually explicit shows in front of children. Around 40 people protested in front of the church with signs condemning LGBTQ people. Senior Pastor Neil Thomas called this a part of a growing pr persecution of drag queens and transgender people in the U.S. 1 Corinthians uh, 6, verses 9 to 11. Do you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. So you can't tell them that you can't tell them that they're wrong. And if you continue on this path or this lifestyle, you're headed in the wrong direction. You're going to end up in hell because they will tell you they, they can call the police on you. You know, this is letting you know that Canada is demonic. That's what type of time they on now. You know, these are the last days, you know, I want to, you know, go ahead and, and you can go, Nish. All right. Just to add, that's, add just, that's just crazy. <clears throat> yeah. You can't, so you can't tell them about God. You can't tell them about God. It's, it's like, it's oh, starting to I'm close offended. in. Oh, I'm offended. I'm uh, 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 Hello? Yeah. It's somebody, it's a Christian in here. <laughs> and what if, what if they put you in that situation once they learn you're a Christian? Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so what are your views? Mm -hmm. well, so what are you doing today? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about? Oh gay no, people. people! People are losing their jobs because of yeah. it already. Yeah, they they just want to put it in in law to to yeah. make sure it could be like this for everyone across the board. Yeah. So we're getting all this AI law set up, all this stuff. We're, we're getting everything made. Now we got we're bringing our laws into play too because when this new world and to happen, new laws are going to come with it. Yeah, so it's happening. Well, you guys, <laughs> it might be just one person up here. <laughs> You know, if I'm, my feet is put to the fire, I got to stand on the word of God, you know. <laughs> I might be in jail. Just write me some letters. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to hold it down. I ain't, you know, all that. 
You just got to go down. That's all it is. It, it, you know, he'll come get you. God wants you out just like he freed Paul out of jail. The angel came open that door. It, it opened up. So it is what it is. You know, the brothers in Canada stand strong. You know, you still got to get a word of God. Oh, let, they can pass whatever laws. You can see, hopefully, you know, be a good fisherman. A fisherman know how to, you know, you know which one to get, a, you know, that you can get that strong bait to that won't say nothing. And some of them, you got to give that soft bait, bait to with some nuggets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of them, you got to you gotta try to, because you don't know. He might feel offended. It might be one of them strong. No, you can. Demonic people. You, you just never know what offend people these days. Yeah, so you got you to gotta be careful what you say to people. But you still, like, you know you what I'm saying? Hey. If you're in Canada, you still got to try you got to give, give the word stop. of God out. Yes. Check it out. But beat around but, the but bush don't go, for a minute. I, yeah. But you can't. Talk about hey. Jesus for a long time. Yeah. You know, have you heard of Jesus? And let them, you know, you know, Jesus came and died for your sins. All sins have fallen short. But, you know, like, you got to, you know. Say <laughs> that <laughs> because you never know. Next thing you know, they're gonna call we you. We can't in live a lifestyle. We don't want you spreading the gospel in office hours. It's gonna say we're paying you to to do the job to put the paper here. We're not paying you to spread the gospel. You got some people that are like yeah. that. You got some jobs that are like that. Yeah. They they don't want you bringing your and views got, into the job place. I, I, I'm not bringing. My, I have to say, you look. If we're, I don't want to talk about basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I feel offended. I don't want to talk about basketball. <laughs> I want to talk about Jesus. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I don't want to talk about basketball yeah. or football on the job. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah you're right. I'm offended. Yeah, I'm offended. I'm offended. Yeah. I'm offended. I'm offended. Call the police. Huh? We got a uh, Detroit police shut down a psychedelic church puts voter okay decriminalization to test. So out in Detroit, uh, police last week raided a psychedelic religious institution called Soul Tribes International Ministries. Now, police searched the building, seized substances, and shut down the facility, calling it an illegal operation. Now, capture part of what happened during a Detroit police raid at Soul Tribes International Ministries on the city's west side Friday. On Tuesday, we went to the church's building and saw bright orange signs where investigators shut the place down. So what is going through your mind when we're looking on your property here and you can't get in because it's closed up? Oh, I'm totally stunned. Uh, it's a true matrix moment right now to actually go through doing everything I needed to do to legalize, decriminalize, to put together a system so people could have healing. And yet, literally standing right here and I've got uh, signs on my door and people are telling I can't go back into my church. Robert Shumay known as Shaman Shu, is the religious leader at Soul Tribes. The shaman believes the city and police targeted him because he offers mushrooms, which he calls sacred plants with his members. Shaman Shu says he's trying to help people cope with and improve their mental health. The shaman's role is, is to help people through that process, to help you identify your, your trauma. Where is that trauma coming from? Is it your trauma or is it your generational trauma? And many people don't realize they have ancestral trauma. Back in 2021, Shaman Shu says he helped craft the ordinance Prop E, a proposal which decriminalizes mushroom use in Detroit. The measure passed. Shaman Shu opened his church in March. Before the police raid, the city says DPD worked with city agencies and Council President Pro Tem James Tate. In a statement, Assistant Corporation Counsel Doug Baker says about Prop E, quote, Despite its intent, the city ordinance does not override state law, which considers psilocybin, commonly referred to as mushrooms, to be a controlled substance. The ordinance also does not allow for the sale or distribution of psilocybin. Bottom line, city leaders say what Shaman Shu is doing breaks Michigan law. But Shaman Shu says he's trying to get people off street drugs, which are tearing communities apart. You got Percocets, you got Oxycontin, you got Fentanyl. We're talking about sacred sacrament. And that's all we're asking for the people, because it's all about the people. Power to the plant and power to the people. We want to get open. Shaman Shu says he is in the process. Now, um, uh, they say, uh, I just want to scroll down to this paragraph. Now, Soul Tribes opened inside of Bushnell Congregational Church over Labor Day weekend at 15,000 Southfield Freeway. Now, the ministry offers mushrooms, ayahuasca, and other uh, 
I believe I'm saying this right, ethiogenic plants they call uh, sacraments. Bushnell itself has been uh, operating for over 97 years. They say these sacraments reflect our deeply held religious beliefs and form an uh, integral part of our worship and religious practices as supported by the Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993 reads the Soul Tribes website. Our mission is to support the religious freedom and practices of those who believe in the therapeutic power of these plants. Claims the police seized over 700,000 worth of entheo... Entheogen in, in, entheogenic plants. 700,000 worth of entheogenic plants. And I say he has not been charged with the crime. Now, uh, he believes in this method that you can heal people. They go through mental problems. You can open their spirituality. Oh, and this is... That's uh, demonic. Exactly. He's not getting that from the Bible. Exactly. Now, I did also did some digging and come to find out, I'm like psychedelic churches because I had never heard of a psychedelic church. But they say psychedelic churches in U.S. is pushing boundaries of religion. So there's more than one. Um, you have tons of I'm not going to say tons, but there's more than a few of these uh, psychedelic psychedelic churches. Now, um, there are some, I believe, in Arizona and Utah. Um, this one guy, he's uh, now I just want to read you all something as what they experienced in there getting at them high at this They're one church, manipulating. Yeah, you get high at this one church, uh, in Utah. Uh, a guy, uh, explain, uh, gives an example, not an example. He tells the story of he went in there and I believe he drank some, um, some type of tea. I want to say it could have been mixed with some type of psych uh, ayahuasca some ayahuasca tea. Now they say Gonzalez started howling, sobbing and laughing and repeatedly babbling wah wah like a child. Now facilitators from Hummingbird Church placed him face down on the grass calming him momentarily before he started laughing and crawling on all fours. He said, I've seen these dark veins come up in this big red light and then I seen this image of the devil, Gonzalez said later. He had quieted only when his wife, Flora, put her hand on his shoulder and prayed. Now, his journey to this small town along uh, along the side of uh, Arizona and Utah border is part of a growing global trend of people turning to ayahuasca in search of spiritual enlightenment and an experiment they say brings them closer to God than traditional religious services. Now, many hope the psychedelic tea will heal physical and mental afflictions after conventional medications and therapy failed. Now, their problems include eating disorders, depression, substance use disorders, and PTSD. They say the rising demand of ayahuasca has led to hundreds of churches like this one, which advocates say are protected from prosec uh, prosecution by a 2006 U.S. Supreme Court ruling. Um, so I'll just stop right there. But this is a thing. Um, these people are going to these churches uh for psychedelic healing, uh, coming with all types of problems, and um, want to get high. That's what they're going for. Want to get high. Some some of them probably smoke weed before. Are you going to church today? Yeah, bro, I gotta go to. And church they're today. seeing all types church. of stuff. Uh, First Peter five verses eight: Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, uh, walk around, walk about, seeking whom he may devour. Mm. So. The devil is there when you don't want to be sober. You don't want to be vigilant. You can't be vigilant if you're not sober. If you high on ayahuasca, <laughs> seeing he said he seen the devil. So that lets you know you getting you doing something that's in his realm. Come on here, baby. Yeah. You know, come on, get get uh the, open your third eye. You just, you're gonna reach a different consciousness. Let's spread this. Uh uh broad is the way of death and destruction. So the devil. Got a lot of you can come a whole lot of ways. You ain't gotta just go to a satanic church. Yeah. You can just be in a strip club. Mm. You can be a stripper. Or you can be the one throwing the tips. He getting both of them, man. He getting the one that's tipping. He getting the one that's stripping. Mm -hmm. He getting the one that's smoking and crack. He getting the one that's dealing. He got the one that's popping a pistol. And sometimes he getting the one that's just getting killed by the pistol. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He's winning every way. If he got the one that don't want to uh, believe on Jesus Christ, he, he going to get you too. Mm. You don't believe on Jesus Christ. You ain't living for him. And maybe yeah. you think you, you say about works. Oh, he going to get you too. And if you everybody's know, so. like, I, I don't understand. Narrow is the way. But they're calling this church. And it's not, I'm sure they're not reading Bible scriptures in there or preaching from the word of God. So yeah. 
um it can't they can't possibly be doing that but it's a thing though you have uh several of these churches are popping up uh they say you know this is starting to be a wave uh, more people are wanting to attend these churches for uh spiritual gui- guidance and healing is the way that they're uh putting it out there um speaking of that since we're on the dark side what was that uh president Zelensky? he asked uh what marina abrovic to to be the amb- uh the ambassador of uh ukraine did you hear about that, Des? That's that uh, white lady. Yeah, and she's into uh, demonic stuff as well. She has like spiritual spirit dinners and cookings and like uh, her birthday cakes with blood and dead bodies on top of it. Like um, a part of a cult, you know, she's uh, also known in the industry for this. And he asked her if she wanted to be the ambassador of Ukraine. Now, why would you, if you're looking to build that up and there's a war over there and a well, crisis. So, why, why, why would you thinking you, like that? Yeah, why would you want a person like that, that to be the ambassador? But uh, that is, yeah, that's weird. And what's she saying? They haven't said what she said. Now, I'm, I'll be interested to see if she's going to take the position. I'd be interested to see that. Um, now, we also got... Now... Um... Two things. So there is a nationwide blood shortage. Um, the American Red Cross has reported saying that there is a blood shortage. They said. Do you think that's why a lot of them people coming up missing in Ohio? Oh, we got to talk about that Something as well. Like that. They said uh, they said every two seconds someone in the U.S. needs blood. Um, so they're saying that um, during the pandemic, the blood supply shortage reached crisis levels in the U.S. as fewer people donated and blood donation centers struggled to survive financially. They say last year, the American Red Cross announced it was facing its worst shortage in more than a decade and could only meet one quarter of hospital demand. Overseas, around the same time, the United Kingdom's blood stock drained to about two days worth. They normally aim to stock enough for at least six days. They say about 60% of the world's nations, including every country in sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, and Oceania, already chronically struggles to meet the need for blood. They say half of blood collected around the world each year comes from the United States, Canada, Europe, and Australia, which all together account for just one-fifth of the global population. But uh, they say disasters regularly sharpen uh, the scarcity's deadlines. So, um, like, they're mentioned things like they say this past February, earthquakes that killed 50,000 people and injured over 122,000 more in Turkey and Syria. And so they're just basically overall, they're saying that it's a nationwide blood shortage. Now, also, I ran into an article. They say lab grown blood could one day save your life. They say certain parts of the human body, it turns out, are replaceable. Now, they've mentioned things like we've already engineered artificial hearts, dialysis machines that filter blood, um, uh, ear implants, uh, collagen scaffolds that help generate skin. They say we've synthesized and administered hormones for gender affirming therapy, period suppression, birth control, cancer, menopause and diabetes. They say we've designed uh, prosthetics to replace not only limbs and digits, but also noses, ears, breasts and genitals. So basically they're trying to say we've pretty much done everything. They say, um, but blood is essentially it, its own organ uh, system. Uh, and they are saying that in humans, it circulates along a 60,000 mile long vascular freeway, uh, distributing oxygen and so forth and so forth. But long story short, they are experimenting with lab grown blood. Now they say in centuries past, physicians unsuccessfully tried substituting blood with beer, urine, salt, water, and milk. But over the last decade, scientists have financially started beer, to- urine. Yeah. They say with. What? They say blood with beer, urine, salt, water, and milk. They say, but over the last decade, scientists have finally started to make breakthroughs in the medical quest to imitate fresh human blood. So it's a it's a well long article, which I'm not going to read all of it, but just know that lab grown blood may be on the way pretty oh, soon. Oh no, the Bible says the life is in the blood, mm. and also I think it was some kind of uh, some kind of doctor or maybe some kind of biologist or what I maybe it was a doctor he came out and he was saying that 
he did a study on the blood. Uh, he, he did some uh, experiment. He said, he, he, like, down on some type of, I want to say, subatomic level or some kind of the, the cells with the, 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 the things contained in the cells, it comes out to Yahweh. You know oh, break, so, like the a code or something. It's like, like a code, yeah, okay. DNA code or whatever. Okay. It's like Yahweh. So basically, God is in the blood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? God, you know, He created you. He just he, you're you. He's through the blood. The blood, you know, for us, his is you know, for us, the word being Yahweh. You know, for us, the code and the whatever. It's just basically like he put this stamp on you. You know, how blood is you, life. What they say, like, uh, Abel's blood was screaming from the ground. Yeah. So him, how can you, know? you try to put some fake blood in something that God, you know, created? Yeah. It's, that's really you're really doing something now. You're really testing. It. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, married pastor accused of producing child porn tells FBI, "I'm sorry that I cannot stop." Mm. So, we got to. He's trying to put it like he has a problem, like you know, because he don't want to do oh, that gotta, time. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, he got, yeah, he but, got but, but he want to say, "Oh, I, I can't. I just can't. you know, how some people. No, he probably can't stop. They want to act like they mentally unstable. Yeah, he probably is. He probably got to no, leave. Man, him. he." Matthew Matthew twelve verses forty three to forty five. He, he like him some. He like he, he liked that. Matthew twelve verse forty three to forty five. He was a pastor. Okay, uh, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, "I will return to my house from which I came." And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Uh, then he goes and takes. Uh, with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first so when he became a pastor once he got the knowledge of the truth of, of uh, Hebrews 10 verses uh, 26 for if we willfully sin after we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So he, the demons came out once he first got saved. He didn't. He, he didn't. His house was swept and clean. He didn't. He didn't put the Holy Spirit in there because he didn't actually believe what Jesus did on the cross. So therefore, he fell back into willful sin and started doing the things that he was supposed to be delivered from. And then them demons came back. You know that demon came back and he brought seven other ones. So even though he probably was in porn back in the day. Yeah. He was a porn watcher, but when them seven other spirits came in, porn wouldn't do it. And he probably was still dibbling and dabbling porn, and fully leave it alone. And then it just that they, spirit of lust, but porn would do it. And all them of uh, the legion came that got in there. So he started seeing little boys, little girls, and start wondering what's in them genes. Mm. How can I? What can I do to? Okay, not only you thinking like that now, it, it ain't got so you ain't got so fuck out and gave you the reprobated mind. So now. You want to make you, you want to get get some action with it. So then you get some action with it. You want to go for I got to film this. Mm-mm. I got to film. You you know how far you are, how far off you are. Yeah. I got those are different steps. This man, he can't stop. He can't stop. He's been given yeah, over. And you got all them kids out there missing in Ohio. Like that's not a you know, he that's taken. serious and they're not getting a we turn now to a frightening trend in Ohio. Children disappearing in record numbers. According to the Ohio Attorney General's office, more than 1,000 children have been reported missing so far this year, with a large number of those disappearances happening in the Cleveland area. I'll be speaking with John Majoy, the president of the Board of Directors for Cleveland, missing in just a moment. But first correspondent Brooke Schaefer joins me live. Brooke, what else are we learning about what's happening there in Ohio? Well, Nicole, officials in Ohio have called these numbers both alarming and startling. We looked on the website for the Ohio Attorney General today and found that this month alone in the state of Ohio, about 160 kids have been reported missing. Again, that's just for the month of September. That is a disturbing number that follows a trend we have reported on here at News Nation when more than 30 kids went missing in just two weeks in May in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland's police chief said a majority of those missing kids were runaways, sometimes habitual runaways. In June, Chief Wayne Drummond said more than a thousand kids were reported missing so far this year, but said with the exception of about 50, they'd all been returned home. Even still, though, the chief acknowledged that missing children's cases in the Cleveland area alone were up about 20% this year. 
So the question, of course, why is it so high in Ohio? Here's former FBI agent and News Nation national security contributor Tracy Walder. They do rank fifth, um, you know, in human trafficking. That's that's actually pretty high uh, for a state that's not as densely populated. I think we suspect, right, that it's, you know, California or New York or Florida. And those are, you know, higher ranking. But Ohio is actually extremely high if you think about it for the lack of population. It's a smaller populated state. It's not as densely populated. This is a peak time um, of runaways and of missing children. But then you also have the issue with how these are being reported and the fact that a lot of them are going unsolved. And that that's huge. And to put this into some context for you as well, states like Georgia and North Carolina with similar populations to Ohio had on average about 600 missing child reports last year. That's according to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Ohio, on the other hand, in 2022, had roughly 1,600 reports of missing kids. Ohio Enough taking pictures with him. He fall off. He fall off. Just like that one pastor. You should that screenshot that to me so I can put that up here. Just, yeah, okay. Just Thank like you. that one pastor that got called in, uh, when he was messing with this prostitute that's a man. You know, it's a pastor. So he was dressed up with a suit and tie. You know, so much so that the man didn't use it, but the man would give him a ser- give him sex. You know, as a service for him, you paid a certain amount of money. The man was so the pastor was so thrown off mentally, but he needed the sex, so he didn't even have the money to give him. He wanted a freebie. He said, "I paid you extra last time." No, that don't matter. So he ended up running down the hallway, laying on the steps. What? The, the tranny and caught him. The, 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 the transsexual and caught him on the step. Mm. And say, no, nah, what you going to do, cry? He started crying on the steps, oh, man. No, he ain't a lot of these no pastors. Butt, man. He ain't crying over no butt. Because he couldn't pay him. He got oh, he man. found himself in a situation dude had a camera out. He, was, he wasn't about to, but oh, okay, it was okay. about dude had a camera out and he wasn't and able to pay him. him. He called him crying, wasn't able to pay, and I'm with a man. I'm going to tell your wife. Yeah, oh, dude was gay. I mean, he ain't like know what dude. to do. He was going out. He ain't know what. You know what? Yeah. The, uh, a lot of pastors are getting called. And I'm saying pastors because you all are held to a high standard. And you all are getting, count, getting caught with little boys and little yeah. girls and the same sex. This is just getting sickening. It's really getting sick. Now. Oh man, this is the world, baby. What you mean? It's, 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 it's you know, it's the world, baby. It's what it's turning to. It's a new day. Uh, okay, Texas ban, uh, a Texas ban on drag show for minors, unconstitutional. Federal judge rules. So therefore, it was unconstitutional, unconstitutional to to ban it for you know, ban a drag show for a minor. Yeah, this is they the, said. This oh, they is, said it the was unconstitutional. Oh, wait a minute. They said it was unconstitutional. Yeah, it was unconstitutional for Texas? Texas to ban a drag show for a minor. Oh wow. Yeah, this this is you know the Bible. When the Bible speaks of a foolish nation, this is the foolish nation the Bible is talking about. This nation, this is the foolish. One. All right, Ethiopian Orthodox Church reportedly canceled Rema's concert over alleged demonic necklace now uh the ep the ethiopian orthodox Tawadio church has reportedly pressured the management of the sheraton hotel in addis abba to cancel the concert of nigerian afrobeat superstar divine akubor or also known as rima also known as rima now he was set to uh perform uh in september and uh basically they weren't going uh they they said that he's into devil worship they said the woman claimed that the concert was canceled by the hotel management after the country's powerful orthodox church leaders accused the singer of being a devil worshiper over his customized necklace it was a it is a um upside upside down church on fire that's what he had uh on his on his uh necklace now I feel like we need more church people yeah. to stand up like they're standing up. Now so that. Yeah. So uh-uh. we if we have more church people standing on the grounds of the faith, no, we you know, we should be saying no to this LGBT stuff. They're able to pass all these laws. We should be saying no to these entertainers coming in this devil worshiper want to perform here and there, or them want to put this in our kids' schools. The church needs to stand up more. The church is us. I bet he like, dang, if I you know, only if I didn't uh, word a change, word I would never knew. Yeah. Yeah, upside you know, sometimes down. Sometimes you gotta listen. You gotta look at a person' fruit and be able to say he's a devil worshiper. His fruit, he's making good. He making song, but this not of God. Look at his fruit. He ain't got no wife. He out here having sex with all these different women. Can we not look at that and say that's a devil worshiper? 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Does he need to have an upside down church on fire? Does he need to have an upside down cross? Can we just look at the fruit and say that's a devil worship? Well, yeah, but then by the laws they they say what what is that? The land of the free, so you can be free to do what you want. I know, but I'm saying like the, the church should be able to say that's a devil worship. You see that man up there? That, yeah, but he, he wasn't claiming bump, to be a, a gospel singer, though. <laughs> no, just, but I'm saying, <laughs> right, like, right. he ain't got to be, I'm just saying, you would know, like, you know, like they look at J. Cole. Like, J. Cole, yeah. they look at him like a, you know, a good a good guy. But mm-hmm. he's a, you, he, look at his fruit mm-hmm. and the way he thinks about God and, the, you know, the way he thinks about the Bible and say he's a devil worshiper. Yeah. I don't care how good he think he is. You know, mm-hmm. look at his fruit. He's a devil worshiper. Like yeah. the, people need to start looking at it from those terms, and then it'll like, yeah, he don't need to have an upside down cross to be a devil worshiper. Yeah, that's true. You yeah, know? you can just tell. But what he's saying his lyrics yeah. are how he present himself. Yeah, he, he might be very lyrical, but and a so devil worshiper. and so, which that's really all the industry. Then if you gonna look at it like yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That that's the world. There's a secular. Yeah, there's a secular world. And and, then, and, and some Christian rappers are entangled into matter, it. Matter of like, fact, you. You was going to talk about it. Did you already talk about it? Yeah, we can talk about okay. it since we already there. Like you have uh, Lecrae. I didn't know he was part of a fraternity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you can't. Now this is the thing. You got Christians who are a part of fraternities, and they don't see anything wrong with that. I don't know how. When yeah. they said the Bible clearly says you cannot serve two masters, you can't partake in any other rituals and yeah. all of this. You know, you when you join a fraternity, you gotta you gotta partake in rituals and chat and chapmans and all of that. Yeah. And uh, Yolanda Adams, she's this clip that I'm going to show. She's boasting about it. She was just like, and she even said that it's secret. Thank y'all for exposing people. And you went to I school. Think, you got your degree. Yeah. What, yeah. what college did you go to? University of North Texas. What'd you Somebody hit us and said you're a Kappa, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, What'd you gosh. major in? Envy wanted to be Yo, a Kappa. Joel, Envy Joel wanted Joel to be Stan. a Kappa so bad. Uh, Joel pretty, pretty like, He's boys, a Kappa. Huh? He's a Kappa. <laughs> hey. Work. 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 And Taylor up to what's going on with y'all? Well, you know, she's back home, of course, uh, and she uh, is now uh, my sorority sister. Whoa, and she's a legacy. So, so, yes, AKA, <laughs> shout out to all my AKAs out there. Can't oh. really like do my signs and stuff like that because they secret. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, and I'm so proud. I, I cried at the uh, mother-daughter tea. Oh. I uh, pinned her and it was just so amazing, you know, for your daughter to want to be a part of right. something that you're a part of. And, yeah. you know, it's now she thinks I'm cool. You know, when, I, when she <laughs> yeah. was younger, it was yeah. like, no, oh, that's just my mom, you know. <laughs> but now, you know, mm-hmm. she, she gets to see the behind, the to, to really, I guess, grasp the, you know, the dynamism of what we actually do mm-hmm. on a day-to-day basis wow. as women in what, you know, in, in business, women mm-hmm. in music, at the forefronts of our careers. And it's yeah. like, wow, you know, our, our moms are really, really cool. And I know mm-hmm. you're experiencing that too uh, with Krista uh, also, Erica, sure. because For it's sure. like, now they're like, now they understand the hard work. Now they yeah. understand yeah. why they couldn't do whatever like everybody else. Yeah. Now they understand what yeah. branding is and, and what a good name means and all For of those real. things. That's so, why yeah. our kids would have been a family business. They do understand now when we had to leave them when they were little, but now they travel with us till does background and she's singing now. She even said, you know, my signs and my symbols and, you know, it's cool. Like she she's boasting about it like it's a cool thing. But this and, is and Jesus said, I never did nothing in secret. Mm. I never did nothing in secret. Uh, Matthew 24 verses uh, Matthew 6, verse 24 to 25. No man can serve two masters for either you will hate one and love the other or, or else you will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be uh and be uh, enslaved to mammon. Mm-hmm. So you can't serve God and mammon. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't eat from the table of the Lord and then the table of devils. Exactly. You know? So you can't serve two masters. Um, exactly. They they want and, you to do different things. And for us, Lecrae, like Lecrae, to me, he's not he's not a Christian rapper. You know, when you hold him to through, look at him through the uh, the uh, 
through the eyes of God, you know, look them, look at them through the, you know, through the Bible and the words of God. You know, you use that to judge who's a child of God, who's following God. You know, uh, from what he said about uh, he denied um, uh, the fact that he didn't he didn't feel like nothing was wrong for his what God word. Like when he was, he was asked that homosexual question mm -hmm. on Vlad TV, he didn't answer it with the word of God. He answered it with his mouth. Mm -hmm. So he, you can tell that by him doing that, that just showed that you know he's his own God. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A Christian is a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. So I don't have no opinion. I look to the book to have my opinion. Mm -hmm. Whatever God's opinion is, that's what my opinion is. Yeah. When we, uh, as a Christian, as Christians, look at it through those, you know, that lens, we able to see like it's obvious to see that this man is not a Christian. You know, then he he's in a fraternity. Uh, we got look at Leviticus 5 verses 4. If a person swears, speaking thoughtlessly with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatever it is that a man may pronounce by an oath, and uh, and he is unaware of it when he realizes it, then he shall be guilty in any of these matters. So, he sw you know, when you go into these different fraternities, you got to make an oath. You got to pledge. Mm. You got to walk across the, the burning sand. You got to, you know, you got to do these all are rituals. These all are, are, are showing, you know, you're showing your obe obedience to this Greek God. All of these Greek fraternities is Greek because those are Greek gods that these people are falling the line under. And you Greek, know? Greek, Greek symbols. Too. He even got it's, the, you gotta, he, he got the symbol on his arm. The, uh, the, the, what they, they, they burn you with it. Yeah, why are you getting marked? The brandish. Yeah. I think it's brandish. Is brandish. It? I think it's called that. Whatever. But yeah, he got that mark on his arm and, you know, he, he denies the word of God, you know. But a lot of these different Christian podcasts, they get him on here on, on, on TV. They, I mean, they just want to interview him because he's successful. They, they, they are enamored by the man money and the man's success. But if he denied the... Uh, John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so when he said he gave his own opinion on homosexuality that shows you and he denied the word of God he denied God but we don't look at it like that mm -hmm. you know as Christians to me that's crazy yeah you know, he's not should. a he's to me he's not a Christian yeah, because he you just also he just makes a lot of he's already successful in the Christian space, so he's not gonna become he's not gonna go back worldly. You know, he's not gonna go worldly because he already know all the people in this Christian space. He already know he's making a certain amount of money. This mm -hmm. is you know it's profitable. Because you also mentioned something. You said a lot of Christian rappers they aren't you don't believe they are in the faith, and yeah. they don't yeah. you know they don't mention it in their uh, yeah. they don't live it. Yeah, you don't feel it. Like, it just be rap. Like, a lot of them just want the spotlight. You know, it's just rap. It's just music. You you do not feel... I don't... By looking at them, you don't feel like they're, they're really following Christ. Now, I might be wrong, but it just don't... It it, it don't give you that feel. I mean, it's, it, you know... It, the bar, to me... Well, just speaking on the music, the, the bar is set so low. Mm. You know, it, it don't seem like nobody is actually doing some... Like, studying and... and when they come present the gospel through this, uh, through the music, it you know, it sometimes it it sound you know, like I said, it sound low. You know, a lot of these guys are, they you know, I don't know. Like if it's a ministry, I feel like you got to be called. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a ministry, you know, I guess you know, but that's just my opinion on it. You know, I, I take a lot of time when it comes to making music. You know, I always did that because I understand how powerful music is, uh, and um, I don't. No. Yeah, basically you're saying like in the Christian uh, music sector uh, and, and Christian hip hop, for example, yeah. that uh, you're saying the bar is set low. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, they're they're not actually living it. Yeah. Um, and they're not even actually speaking it through their music. They're just making yeah, it a like. Lot of, a lot of, yeah, a lot of this, these musicians, a lot of these artists like hip hop, uh, Christian hip hop artists, you know, they, they're average at best. And they're just speaking from, you know, because God is the creator of music, right? Mm -hmm. He's better at music than the devil is. Yeah. So the the music, the Christian hip hop community or the Christian music should be better than the world's music. Yeah. It should be better. But we cannot say that because it's a lot of, you know, these, you know, Kendrick and J. Cole and them and Jay-Z. You know, these guys, we're not going to, we, 
we know we have a better message because our message is true, right? Mm -hmm. But we're just gonna speak on a like a just a, a smoothness or a lyrical standpoint, just a, the way it sounds. Like they they sound much better than you know the world. You saying the worldly music the worldly sounds music better sounds than the Christian better, music, yeah. which it should be the other way and around. A lot of them, the Christian of, music should sound better than the worldly. And music. a lot of them steal the the uh, the worldly the, the, the worldly cadences, cadences and the flows of the the worldly people and just transform them. I th a lot of Caleb Gordon, it sounds like he he does a lot of that. You know, of and, Drake. Like no, I think it's you know he had one song sound like Offset, and I'm pretty sure he takes a lot of you know different artists mm. or whatever. So you can tell that they're listening to these people music, mm. and so they they're allowing the devil to give them the cadence. influence. And yeah, yeah. That, that, if you listen to them and taking their cadence, that cadence came from the the, the, the underworld. That came from the devil. Mm. The devil is the one giving them the music when they getting high. The mm. devil coming, the demons coming in to, to drop the high track. So you're taking those cadences. You're not waiting on the Lord. You want to put some out. You you want to put some out real quick, and you don't want to rely on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you coming up with your own cadence, your own way, you're allowing the God to give you the cadence. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't be stealing from the world, man. That stuff is trash, bro. It shows that you don't. You ain't really built for. Wow, yeah, and it does, yeah, you know, the almighty God is powerful. It, it does seem like, you know, we should glorify his music more. Like, his yeah. music should be top dog. Yeah. But instead, it's like the other way around, and then the Christians are seeking that influence from from Satan, essentially, from Satan. And, um, yeah, and I will, do you have anything else before we got here? Uh, no, that was it. That was it. Um, I do want to leave you all guys with the tip of tip of the day. You know, um, consult with the Holy Spirit. Um, at times, it, it's it's really hard uh, <clears throat> with the battle of the flesh, uh, our fleshly thoughts versus our spiritual thoughts. And uh, every now and then, really every day, we need to consult the Holy Spirit. You know, let's uh, consult Him and ask Him how should we walk, how should we talk, how should we think. You know, ask Him to uh, guide and control your lusts, your desires. You know what I mean? What should be my next business move, my next job opportunity? You know, we need to start praying and uh, fasting more. And uh, don't just pray on a full stomach while you're in the bed and you got the covers pulled up to your chin. No, get on your knees and spread your hands out and uh, t talk to the Lord, consult with the Lord, treat him like your father and, and treat him like your Lord and, and ask for help. Tell ask, ask for help during this battle. We, we, we can't win against the flesh, but allow, but uh, um, continue to ask for the Holy Spirit to dwell in us and be the light, be the light of our bodies, to be the life of our bodies, to be the life of our spirit. You know what I mean? And um, it's a constant fight and it's, it's daily. And uh, you want to make you want to make that faith a strong part of your faith. You know, uh, prayer is how you connect with God. And so if you're not making that part of your daily routine and if you just land in the bed and just like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And, you know, you got the cover. No, you have to uh, if you can stand in line with it for a chicken sandwich or for a pair of Jordans, you can get on your knees and spread your hands out and give the Lord some of your time. Romans verses nine and ten. If we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and God risen him from the dead, then you can be saved. For it's with the heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with the mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. All right, amen. We're going to leave right. with the dream, the dream of, the, of week. the week. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. Jesus, Lord, God bless. Um, in the dream, I'm going to just hop right into it. So in the dream, I was at one of my friend's house who I normally don't deal with anymore. But um, in this dream that I had yesterday, um, I was at her house with her and her kids. And all of a sudden, it was zombies everywhere. I'm, I'm talking about everywhere. It was zombies all over the place. They were trying to come through the windows. They already came inside of the house. So I told them, I was like, let's go to a room in the house that has no windows in it, you know, so they can't get in. And all I could remember was to shoot them in the head, shoot them in the head, shoot them in the head. And in this dream, I wasn't scared of them. I don't know why, but I wasn't scared of the zombies. So all I can remember was I ran out of bullets and I called my mom and I was just yelling at her. I'm like, hey, tell my brother to come and, and get both of his guns and bring all the bullets that he has. 
and shoot these zombies in the head. It was so many zombies. I mean, everywhere. And I don't watch scary movies and stuff like that about zombies and stuff like that. But the Lord placed it on me and in my heart that somewhere along the line, we're going to be attacked by zombies real soon, sooner than later. Okay. And I just want to come on here and share that quick dream that I had last night with you guys. But, um, yeah, it was zombies everywhere, everywhere.